All right, folks, welcome to part three of building the Bright Sky Weather app. In the last part, we got the user's location for which we're going to be fetching weather. We also did some view set up here, getting this orange and red view to start showing up. We're going to finally start taking a look at using that location to get some weather info. Before we jump in, hit that like button, get pumped, let's jump back into our executed project, and let's talk about getting weather. So we did create this weather manager object, which is a singleton that we pass a location to to get weather. Now, once we've gotten that weather, we kind of want to have some sort of callback. So we're going to have a closure here and I'm going to jump into our weather manager and we are going to change the signature of our uh, function here to have a closure since right now we don't have one. So, all right, if you build after adding that function and the function call site as well, we should be building and it should have no problems. Let's start using WeatherKit. So WeatherKit is Apple's framework that we can use to get the weather, surprise, surprise. And the way it works is, is that it exposes a service called the weather service, if I'm not mistaken. You can instantiate it directly or you can use the singleton that's available for it. We're gonna use a singleton since you know we aren't gonna have multiple services. Um, if you did wanna have you know multiple weather services across your application, you could choose to do that, but we'll use a singleton here. So with the weather service, we can actually get the weather for a given location. And you can even specify you know, what you want to include with the weather query. So we are just going to specify this location and we can see here that not only is this a async await function, it's annotated async, but it can also throw. So let's actually call this function first and let's put this in a do catch block because it can throw like so. And it's also a async function, so we want to await its results. So let's see what the problem here is. So it's saying async call in a function that does not support concurrency. All right, that makes sense. So what we'll in fact want to do is wrap all of this inside of a task, and we should be able to invoke this now. Now in our catch case, we're gonna be bad citizens, and for now, we'll just print out the error. We're gonna say print out a string describing the error if one gets thrown, let's add that trailing parenthesis. And now that we've gotten result back, we'll call completion, like so. And we'll also print out some stuff off of this result. So we'll have results, and if you take a look, we've got quite a bit of stuff on here. We've got hourly forecast, daily, minutely, current, um, availability so let's print out the current weather and I'll do basically here we'll say that this is current and essentially right now we're just gonna print everything out to make sure we can indeed you know get some information out of these models but we will eventually want to convert these models to view models to render to our pretty nice looking app which is kind of bland at the moment so all right, let's see what's going on. So this is yelling at me that this await here, try must proceed await, okay? It's a warning, not an error. So, you know, not a huge deal, but let's fix that just in case. And uh, let's give this a build and run and let's see what we get in our console. So we already did give the user permission for location, so we don't get that anymore. But we do get the location up here. If we take a look, at this so we have weather service it's aborting our uh call let's see missing products that need to be fetched from the server let's see not relevant okay let's see what other stuff we're getting here looks like there's an auth issue encountered an error when fetching weather data subset all right it's yelling at me about the location so let's see what's going on. So it looks like we're hitting an error and we gotta find out why we're hitting the error. So let's uh, prefix this with a new line, new line, and I'll put an error here. We'll just append this. I believe that's what we're getting printed out. All right, yep, we're definitely hitting that error. So let's see what's going on because we should definitely be seeing some weather information. So we'll go back to features. Let's change our location to be Apple. And let's see what gives because we should be in good shape to get some weather so we're getting this weather issue twice we're getting an authenticator service listener error 
Air 2. Not quite sure what this is, but we're going to debug it together. So let's see what's going on. So this weather service is pretty straightforward, which leads me to believe that something in our capabilities is not set up appropriately. So let's jump back here. We're going to go to capabilities and it does look like we have weather kit enabled. Our bundle ID is io.iosacademy.brightsky. Okay, that looks to be good. Let's jump back to our Apple uh, account here, the developer portal. We'll refresh this and let me see what's going on. So we have this as bright sky and io.iosacademy.brightsky. All right, that looks good as well. Alrighty, let's see what's going on. All right, if I come down here, weather kit is indeed checked. We don't want to really check anything else. Um, but oh, it looks like I didn't. I never saved my bundle ID, perhaps. So let me hit save here. Uh, I don't believe I changed anything, but let's just confirm it for the sake of saving it. And let's try this one more time. Perhaps I just never saved it initially. And it does look like we are still hitting some errors. So let me expand this. Perhaps it might take a few minutes to propagate, so let's bear with this here. But let's assume that uh, we are getting the weather data, and while that's taking its time, let's focus on something else. We can always come back to that, and we kind of obviously will have to to make this whole app work. But in the meantime, what I can do is, for our settings tab, we have this red view, but what we want to do is set up a pretty basic table view I'm gonna run through it uh, slightly quickly since you know table views are fairly common and not the main star of this series. So let's jump into our setting view and inside of here, we want to create a table view. So what I'll do is I will stub out this table view called a table view, super creatively named. It'll be of type UI table view and we're not gonna do anything too fancy in this table view since we kinda of just want uh, a few options. So we'll create the table view and return it. We're gonna to want to register a standard UI table view cell to this with the ID of cell. And we will also go and say table.translate auto resizing mask into constraints is equal to false. Let's come here and say add subview table or table view I should say. We also want to set up a delegate and a data source for this table. And of course, we need to give this guy some constraints as well so we can lay it out appropriately. So we'll say the top anchor, if we get autocomplete to behave, is equal to the current view's top anchor. Copy and paste this guy three more times and do the right, left, and bottom. And once again, I'm running through this kind of quickly because you know we're just creating a basic table view. Now we're getting yelled at about those table view protocols that we have assigned to self, but not yet conformed to. Alrighty, we're gonna get yelled at again because we need to offer some implementation for the required methods in those table protocols. So we want a number of rows in section. That's the required one. We'll say, let's do one for now. We also want cell for row where we will DQ a cell. So we'll say cell equals table view, DQ a reusable cell with an identifier, needs to match what we registered above. And for the time being, let's just set the text labels text to test, return the cell here and give this guy a build and run. So on this tab, we should now see the single cell tapping it, absolutely nothing happens. We do want this to get handled and we want obviously a view model to configure our table here instead of hard coding it. We will come in here and say, did select, did select row is what I'm looking for, which is the implementation for this delegate protocol in which we want to say deselect i i e uh, unhighlight that row and we want to have a way to configure this view as well so we're going to say public func configure with view model and what we'll want is a view model for this view. This is a settings view. So I'm going to call it a settings view view model, just like that. 
And once we've gotten a view model, we can hang on to it in the global scope. I realize I haven't created that settings view model yet, so bear with me. Alrighty. We're also going to mark this class as final, which is just good practice. So we don't, you know, subclass it just to make it explicit. And let's create a Swift file for that view model. Inside of this view model, we are essentially going to have a single element, which is a option, which is a type of setting option. And setting option will essentially just be a list of cases in an enum or enum, depending on how you say it, of options. So here we will have an option of upgrade. We'll have an option of privacy policy, terms, contact, get help, rate app. And I believe these six elements are probably good enough. They're sufficient. We'll have a computed property of title here, and we will essentially just switch on all these elements and uh, add a title and a string that's going to show up in our UI. So upgrade to pro. Here we will say privacy policy terms of use, contact us, get help, and finally, rate app with an exclamation mark just to make things a little more exciting. Let's come back here, let's see why this is yelling at us. Alrighty, looks like we are assigning to our view model of the view model type. It says cannot assign to property. I believe I made this a let accidentally. Alrighty, so I did make this a let accidentally. So once we assign to this view model, we're essentially going to tell our table to refresh itself. So we'll say reload data. And down in our table, we can now leverage this view model. So we can say view model and uh, what we actually want is a collection of the setting view model. So let's come back in here since we don't just want one option, we want a collection of these options. So what I can do in here is I can say that the number of elements is our view model .option .count. Otherwise, we're going to leverage zero. And in this case, what we'll do is we're going to say uh, for the cells title, if let view model, if we have it and it's not nil, we can say that the cells text label dot text is going to be the view model option and the element at the index path dot row and the title. And that's how we'll get that to show up. Let's do command B and give this a build and run. And let's see that nothing should be in our table here. Looks like we're still getting the error for that. Uh, for that weather fetch. So we're gonna have to debug that and perhaps I'll do that after this video and the next part will continue there. So let's make something show up in this setting screen and then we can probably wrap up this video since it's a reasonable amount of progress. So back in our settings controller, we have actually created and set up this view here. Let's move this view configuration to another function called setup view pretty simple and this primary view what we want to do is we want to set it up with a view model so what i'll do is i'll create this and what's known as a anonymous closure we'll say our view is a settings view and inside here we can say view.configure and we want to create a view model so again this view model is going to be of type settings view view model and we'll instantiate this with a collection of options and what we can actually do is slightly intelligent. We can say that this is case iterable. So instead of having to manually list this out, we can just reference the all cases property that case iterable gives us. So we can say this dot all cases, just like so. Give this a build and run. And our setting screen will have all of our wonderful options showing up in the order that we have added them to our options enum. So as a quick recap, since I kind of flew through that, even though it's not, you know, the primary thing we're learning here is we set up a table in our settings view. We set up a settings view view model, which essentially holds a collection of options. 
The type of option is an enum where we added a computed property for the title that will get displayed to the user. And back in our view for settings view, i.e. where the table is shown, once we assign the view model through the configure with view model function, we tell the table to reload itself and the table uses the elements in our view model, i.e. options to basically show uh, the elements to our user, i.e. in the user interface from the view model. And all of that starts in the view controller where we have now said our view model is an instance here with all cases and we tell our view to configure itself with that view model. So once more, that is how we set up the setting screen back to our weather manager. We're hitting some problems here, but essentially we're using this weather service to go and fetch the current weather with the location coordinates that were passed in. I should say location object more specifically, coordinates are a property off of this. It is a async function, hence we are awaiting here. And the function can also throw, hence it is in a do catch block and we prefix it with the try keyword. So that is all I've got for you guys in this part. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or got stuck along the way. I'll take a look at what went wrong with this weather service. I suspect it's something with the basic setup. And in the next part, we'll make sure to debug it together and continue onward and upward. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next part.